If you're in the market for a small five-door hatchback, then you're certainly not spoilt for choice. And the most obvious choices would be the Volkswagen Golf or the Ford Focus, or perhaps the excellent Kia Seed. Well, there's one hatchback that's come back from the dead that has the heritage to beat a Golf and the running costs to shame all of its rivals. It is the Toyota Corolla. But before I tell you if this car is as good or perhaps better than its rivals, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do click on the little bell icon so you know when our latest video has landed. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter if social media is your thing. The Corolla name may have been around since 1966 and appeared on over 45 million cars that have been sold, but it hasn't been seen in the UK for over a decade. This new Corolla uses the same platform as the Prius and the CHR SUV, and far bolder styling than the car it replaces, the rather uninspiring Aris. It comes as a hatchback like this, an estate and a saloon. So what about the interior? Well, I'm going to start with the positives. There are some very nice materials that have been used and the whole thing feels really well put together. Um, I quite like the line of the dash. I think it looks quite interesting. I like the red stitching. Uh, there's some good storage. Door bins are a little bit mean, but there's uh, lots of little handy compartments and also a decent sized glove box. Uh, but then the whole thing just feels curiously dated. It feels like a car from another era. Um, I don't know, it's like it's trying to be something that it isn't and hasn't quite managed to pull it off. I'm not so sure about that chrome trim there. Um, and really this is definitely the worst part, the infotainment system. Now this has been used in Toyotas for years and in the Corolla, yes, it is slightly crisper on the screen, but really the whole system is very clunky to use and it just doesn't look that nice stuck on there with these lines of buttons down the side um oh look i've done, done something there straight away um it's just not that intuitive and you can't even rely on using android auto or apple carplay to make your life easier because they're just not available even as an option and you know for a new car in this day and age that just seems such an odd decision Icon kicks off the range and comes with that 8-inch touchscreen, automatic LED headlights, 16-inch alloys, heated front seats and a parking camera. Sat-nav comes on the Icon Tech, while 17-inch wheels and privacy glass come with a design model. The XL, like this car, gets part leather seats and sports front seats, and it can be optioned with a black roof if you fancy it. Now, space here in the back isn't massively generous, but it's on a par with the Ford Focus or the Vauxhall Astra. Certainly not as much space as you'll find in some of its rivals, though. Um, legroom and headroom is OK here on the outer seats. Slightly different story when you move into the middle because you're raised up. And look, I'm five foot four and I'm almost touching the roof there, so it's not great. Um, but you do get to Isofix child seat points on the outer seats. And you've got little cup holders here. And this is really curious because I've just spotted this as a little sign. So you're allowed to put a bottle in the cup holders, but that's a big no sign for coffee cups. So I, I don't know why that is, but these are cup holders for bottles, but not for hot drinks. There we go. Um, another thing about the doors is that they don't open that wide, which is a real pain in a car that is meant to be a family car because invariably you're going to be loading children in and out of the back here. If the doors don't open wide enough, it's quite hard to get them in and out of child seats. So let's take a look at the boot. And it's a similar story here at the boot because space, well, it's, it's just OK, really. Um, it's about the same size as the Ford Focus, um, but what I don't like about it is this big drop down here uh, that you have to reach down to reach the boot floor. It's a bit irritating. And also be warned, if you go for the two-litre hybrid version, then that car's battery will really eat into the boot space. As you probably know, hybrids are a big thing at Toyota, and there are two hybrid versions of the Corolla. There's a 1.8 with 120 brake horsepower that's backed up by a 600 volt battery and a 2 litre with a 650 volt and more power, 178 horsepower to be precise. 
Now we've got the 1.8 here, and just like the Prius and the CHR, that combination of engine and electric motor work well. And for the most part, it's really pretty quiet and smooth. It's not desperately fast. You're not going to find this massively punchy, but it is quick enough. Um, it's about a second quicker to 60 than uh, a one litre Golf, for instance. The two litre is usefully quicker though. Not to 60 is just under eight seconds, and it can cruise in EV mode up to 70 miles per hour. Earth shattering it may not be but the Corolla's trump card is efficiency. MPG ranges from between 55 and 66 miles per gallon under the new real-world testing, and CO2 emissions are just 76 grams per kilometre. A Ford Focus can't get within 15 grams per kilometre of that. Go for the two litre and those figures slump slightly to between 50 and 60 miles per gallon and 89 grams per kilometre. It's actually pretty nice to drive as well. I'd say the Corolla is somewhere between a focus in the handling department and the Golf when it comes to comfort, which is actually a pretty good combination. The steering is direct, the chassis feels quite keen when you turn in and the ride is pretty good. It is a sweet car to drive and for me, this is definitely its strongest attributes. However, and you knew there was a buck coming here, didn't you? Um, the hybrids are let down by the CVT gearbox, as always with Toyotas. You know, it does seem that with every new Toyota, that CVT transmission gets a little bit better, but it's still frustrating compared to the conventional automatic in a Focus or an Aster or a Golf or the Kia Seed. You never get the sense that what your right foot is doing is really translating well to what the engine is doing. Press the throttle hard, as I'm doing now. Yes, I can see that the rev counter is going up, but it just seems to take such a long time to catch up. On the two litre, you do get paddle shifters behind the wheel that, while there are no physical gears in the transmission, do help to reduce this rubber band feeling just a little bit. Around town though, and the hybrid models are fine, they just irritate on a country road. But if a hybrid isn't for you, there's a 114 horsepower 1.2 litre petrol with a six-speed manual gearbox that revs the engine on down changes. It's not as frugal as the hybrids though, with 39 to 47 miles to the gallon and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. But that is comparable to its rivals. So the Corolla then, is it just a new old name on a car that still doesn't make you want to buy it? Well, not quite. It's definitely a transformation from the dreary old Aris, with an appealing blend of refinement around town, comfy ride, good handling and a really solid build quality. Apart from that plain awful infotainment system and hybrid powertrain that will frustrate keener drivers, the Corolla isn't a bad car at all. And if you can look past its faults, you'll get a hatchback that's cheap to run and nice to drive. Don't leave us just yet. Why not watch Batch's review of the Ford Focus and our Hatchbacks playlist and click the Car Buyer logo to subscribe to the channel.